Hey all, once again let's meet Sid. He completed his PY quiz on CSV files, but he knew there was still a pending topic in his Python journey, that is modules. One evening he opened his notebook and wrote the name of the modules, math, random and statistics. At first the number of functions in these modules looked a bit intimidating, but Sid remembered his golden rule, don't try to learn everything in one go. Take it step by step. He began with the math module, then came to random module. Finally, Sid dived into the statistics module. And if Sid can do it, so you can. Based on your syllabus, we must have the knowledge of these three different modules. The first one is math, the second one is random, and the third one is the statistics module. Out of these three modules, random module is very important because you will be getting output based question on it. All right then let's discuss the important functions from this module but before that just for knowledge let's try to understand the difference between library package and module these terms are used interchangeably but we should know the difference between them consider a real life library in the library you will have many shelves in the same way you will have library in programming language too which consists of different packages and we know that shell contains many books in the same way in one package you may have many modules now tell me what book contains it contains many chapters or different topics in the same way modules will have many functions in it then if we talk about the definition library is nothing but a collection of packages and what's the package it is nothing but a collection of modules and in module what you will have generally you will have functions along with that you may have some variables and other details too with the hope that it is clear to you now what is library package module and functions let's proceed with the math module now we know that module contains different functions so here is list of some of the function of math module it means all these functions are part of the module and to use this we must import the module first for that we will be using import statement and then name of the module now with the use of module name you can use the functions of that module all right let's check out the functions now here is a power function which is used to calculate the power x raised to y for calculating square root also we have one function sqrt make sure these functions will give the answer in the form of float Along with these functions there is a long list of functions which math module provides there are trigonometry functions as well as logarithmic functions and that is very easy to understand there is nothing complicated about it all right we are in vs code and let's execute the power and square root function of the math module look at the output the result is in the form of float 2 to the power 3 is 8 and the square root of 14 is 4 but let's discuss these two functions also which are used for rounding the numbers the first is cell it will rounds up it means it will round up to the next integer value if you want to keep the functioning of cell function in mind easily just think that where ceiling will be ceiling will be on the top so it will round up to the higher integer Look at all these example. Cell function will always rounds up. Four point one is also five, and four point nine is also five. Hope you got it. The reverse of it is a floor function. Always floor will be in the down. That's why it rounds down. Look at the example. Four point seven will be four. It is rounding down. It means floor function will round to this integer value. Once again we are in VS code let's check out the result of the floor function for different values here we are the floor function gives the lowest integer along with that there are lot of functions let's check out look at the list of the functions math module contain all the mathematical functions are available in it but along with functions you will have some constant too this e is a constant we are well familiar with such constant it is nothing but pi here it is you can also use this if you want to use the value of pi in your program look at the output when we are printing the value of pi we are getting 3.14 
All right, then let's proceed to the next module. It is statistic module. All the functions related to statistics will be available in this module. Out of many functions, we will be concentrating on three, mean, median and mode. Obviously, these functions works on set of data. In that case, we can provide list or tuple. What is the use of mean function? It calculates average. Here is the next function that is median. Median means it's exactly middle value of the given data. Look at this example. 30 is at the middle. That's why we got 30. When we are using these functions, we need not worry about the formula, how to calculate it. It will directly give the answer. The third function from this module is mode function. It returns the most frequently occurring value in the data set. Look at the example. 3 occurs thrice. That's why we got 3. Like math module, we must import statistic module also using import statement. Alright, we have imported the statistics module using import statement and here is one list on which we are going to apply these three functions mean, median, mode. Let's execute and check out the output. Mean gives the average, so we got it. Median function gives the middle value. How it is calculated? First, the values will get sorted and based on the criteria whether we have even number of elements or odd number of elements the median will get calculated and what about this mode function it gives the repeated value we can see 40 is repeated two times that's why it is the mode of the list now we are proceeding to the most important module that is random module from this module we are going to discuss five functions. The first is the random function. What it does? It gives the random number. But what type of number? It gives float. Then what's the range? The default range is 0, 0.0 to 1. 1 is exclusive. That's why you will not get 1. Less than 1 you may get. But now you may raise a question. What if we need to provide the range? In that case, you can use uniform function. It takes the range A to B. It means it will provide the floating number in between A and B. Alright, we understood how to generate float random number. But generally, we don't go for floating point random number. We need integer. For that, we have rand in function. It will obviously generate integer number in the given range. Make a note of it. It is inclusive. Inclusive means outer limit is also included in the range. Make sure you are clear with this function because we will be using it in a output based question. If you want to generate integer random number using step then you can use rand range. Here you can provide the step value. Based on the step value the numbers will get incremented. Look at the example. Here the step value is 2. It means the possible values will be 1. 3, 5, 7 and 9. Out of these you may get any one. Now let's discuss one more function choice. From the given data which can be in the form of list tuple or string it will choose a random element. How it will work? Look at the example. We are providing a list of string out of that one random element got selected. Hope you are clear with the usage of all these functions because we are gonna use it to solve the questions. Hey, we are in VS code. We have imported the random module. To generate floating point random number, we have two functions, random and uniform. And to generate integer random number, we have randy as well as rand range. And the next function is choice, which randomly selects the item from the sequence. Let's execute this program and check the output. With random function, we got one floating point number, which will be in the range from 0, 0.0 to less than 1. But with the uniform function, we can mention our range. Randin generates one random number in the range 1 to 10. Both are inclusive. The next function is rand range function. Here we give the step value. And based on it, the number will get generated. Here are the possible values. The first value will be 1. Then the next value will get incremented by 3. It means it will be 4, then 7. Note that in rand range, the upper limit is exclusive. Out of this, 1 is getting generated here. 
and the choice function will select random element from the given sequence. In this attempt, we got this fruit apple. If we execute this code again, we may get different values. Look at the values. So try out all these functions with your own values. Because random module is important, you will surely get one question in which you need to guess the output. Alright then, it's time to wind up today's video. In the next step, Sid will solve PY quiz based on these three modules and you should too. Because practice isn't just the way to succeed, it's the only way. See you in the next video.